So moving forward onto your um, photography, because yeah. it's it's uh, you you mentioned earlier you captured some really beautiful um, older people and you went into a, a, a senior citizen home. What kind of enjoyment do you get out of photography? The joy of photography for me is the joy to capture a fleeting moment, capturing life um, and uh, being able to show that every aspect of life can be beautiful. The, the role of photography, uh, in my feeling, the way how I feel it and connect with it is to again create uh, an awareness that uh, no matter where you are, uh, no matter what are the conditions around you, uh, there is always uh, uh, a miracle around you. And so that's uh, with that uh, in my uh, in my feelings, I just go around with the camera and I start to connect with the fleeting moment, with the here and now, and then I start to see images uh, and then I capture. Sometimes I succeed, sometimes I don't. But basically it's always the idea to create an emotion, creating a, a, a connection with life because we are, at this moment, humanity is very disconnected. And so any opportunity to give a chance to someone to reconnect and most of them will not connect because they are so busy, they are so taken by the game, they become the game, they know, they think that they are the game, and so they are constantly running, running, they have no time, no, no moment of pause and just listening, or, 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 you know, they never do that because they are constantly in anxiety because they have to produce, 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 it survive, 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 uh, you know, compete, compete. Um, accumulate, accumulate, that is the anxiety and so they completely uh, disconnect themselves from the here and now and so photography like music and like many other beautiful expression of uh, the arts uh, create that uh, chance to, to, to say hey f stop for a moment look at this mm -hmm. or listen to this or watch this you know uh, and, and connect with your soul, feel. Yeah, you know? it's like stop and smell the roses. So the first time I came in America, I came to San Francisco as a photographer. And um, I was really, I felt um, a sense of freedom that I could not find in my, in my town in Italy. And uh, I was very impressed by the energy. Uh, I felt like uh, there was a huge amount of possibilities here. That's why later on I decided to, to come here and, uh, and give it a try. 90, when I first time I came here, it was probably 85, 86. And then um, three or four years later, I, I dropped my uh, photography. I came here, I came here, I didn't even speak English, I didn't know anybody, I didn't have any money, I remember, I just have a, I had a keyboard and that's all. How does it heal? Well, the, uh, the way how I create music helps uh, people that are ready for to release emotions that are stuck, that are compressed. And so this music, because it's deeply, sometimes it's deeply emotional, help you to 
uh, if you allow it and you are ready to embark in that kind of journey, it, it helps you to release all this uh, stuck emotion and eventually reach a state of, uh, of love, of pure love, where you don't see anymore the separation, uh, where uh, the narrative or the ego, the contractive and separating uh, narrative of the ego is, is subsides. So that is uh, the way how I am uh, using music. Uh, most of the time, not always, but most of the time. Do you think your music could heal autism or some of the other um, disorders? Uh, yes, of course. Music and sounds are, uh, if the composer has a purity of heart, so he doesn't have a hidden agenda, an ego agenda, and his um, connection with source is pure, then the music that comes through is always uh, very supportive and also very healing in the sense that it helps you to remember who you are. Purity is the absence of ego. When, when there is, the ego is deactivated or temporarily is... Uh, uh, silent in those rare moments where humans manage to do that because it's not easy but it's getting easier and easier and eventually will subside completely that's a moment where we go to our natural state of being which is the soul and the soul is pure the soul doesn't have any uh, hidden agenda it just wants to evolve and it just wants to be of support that's the only thing that is relevant for the soul. So I just align myself, I surrender myself to the here and now uh, in, in what I do, because in the here and now is where the soul resides. Uh, because the soul knows only here and now, it doesn't understand past and future. Those are narratives that come from the ego. So the best way to meditate is to connect with stillness, with, with silence. Uh, and you can do that through meditation or you can do that through communion with nature. You can do that through music uh, or sounds. And you can do that through love making. Uh, and you can do it also uh, through uh, the creative process, following your imagination. These are the portal that uh, we can use in order to stay uh, in that uh, in that here and now, where we can really hear our true voice, which is the voice of the soul. Well, it's not that I'm in a constant state of meditation. Sometimes I also, uh, often I go into my mind. The difference is that uh, what is happening with this, I'm, be, I'm more and more aware that I'm in my mind when I'm in my mind. And so when that happens, I don't take it too seriously. I say, oh, here we go, I'm in my mind. That was fun. You got me again. Okay, fun. All right, let's try again, you know. And, um, but, um, I think it is wonderful uh, to sit and do meditation, uh, but eventually you want to uh, leave all your moments, my moment by moment, in a state of meditation, right? Because when you do that, uh, what happens is that in that state of meditation you are present, and when you act, whatever you are doing, making a coffee, taking a shower, answering a phone call, whatever you do in an act of presence uh, has divine content, has uh, the miracle of life in it. And so uh, not only whatever you do is, it is impactful for yourself, but also for everybody else. And, 
and then you become an artist because at that point you are using your, uh, your uniqueness, you are using your um, blueprint, your uh, unique way because each of us, although we are all one, but we are all different at the same time, we are all unique. Each of us can do things in a very unique way like nobody else can. Now, many of us have forgotten their uniqueness, have lost touch of their uniqueness, and so they line up into the ordinary stream of doing things uh, because they disconnect themselves. They've been convinced that they, that's not valuable. In order to win the game of society, you have to uh, apply the rules and regulations, uh, forget your uniqueness, just become uh, like everybody else uh, and then from there create competition and, uh, and whatever they do in order to feel accomplished. But the truth is that um, when you connect with a, with a fleeting moment and, and you're, you are present in whatever you do then that's, that's when uh, we are expressing our divine power, our uh, imagination, imagination, which is the same imagination of Source itself. So when we are present, present we invite in our pro creative process Source itself and also our, all our animic, uh, our soul family and also all the aspect of our, our soul, they all come and join us into the creative process, into the creative process. And so, um, that uh, uh, magnified in, in, in an exceptional way the quality of your doing. Buddha, Buddhists, yeah. think that desire mm. is the root of all of our problems. Yeah. Would you agree with that? For me, there are two types of desire. There is a desire that comes from the ego, and there is a desire that comes from the soul. The desire that comes from the ego comes from a, a sense of luck. And therefore, yes, it can be an experience, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's an experience. But it's never really fulfilling, and it's, it's really not authentic, and it does create problems. Uh, I would say that the reason why uh, we are in a world uh, as it is right now is because we uh, is the result of the ego desire. Uh, but the desire of the soul, uh, that I think it needs to be fully embraced because it's the desire, desire to, to support life, to evolve, to, to create, to do, to expand the possibilities. So that desire, I think, is uh, divinely beautiful and is the same, de the same desire of Source when it fragments itself in order to have an experience. So that desire has to be there, I think. Is there um, an importance of detachment? Yeah, detachment, uh, I don't know if it's the right word because detachment sometimes sounds like you are indifferent, you are not... Uh, you don't want to feel. Sometimes you, it, that word is used like you're so detached, you're so distant. Uh, but it's more like neutrality, where you you do uh, feel, but you don't get lost in those feelings. You don't allow those emotions to define you. Uh, you just become an observer. So you stay center. And you still enjoy the, um, the um, expressions of the emotions, but you don't get lost in it. You don't allow the emotion to drive you. So uh, that allows you to stay centered in your soul rather than getting caught up in the narrative of the ego. But it takes you away from the soul into this mind masturbation that never ends. You know, so yeah, neutrality is actually what we need to master. One of the many, one of the few things we need to master right now is neutrality. 
Um, so it, we play the game, but we don't get lost in the game. We don't think that we are the game. A lot of us have been playing this game and watching this game to the point where they think that they are the game and there is nothing else but the game. And so, of course, in those kind of uh, parameters, uh, the game becomes very, very dramatic, uh, very, very serious and very, very scary also. But if you just play the game and you remember and you remind yourself, you feel, you, are, you, are, you know who you really are and you know that you are far much, much more than the game, then, uh, then you can play the game. joyful way and you can also be dramatic you can also get upset you can frustrate be frustrated you can experience the whole thing but without completely getting lost into it you know behind the, the curtain there is always a centeredness there is always a smile It's possible, uh, but uh, I don't. I try not to create a future. I try to stay in the present, uh, but I sense that present after present moment, it seems something is unfolding more and more and is expanding. It has to because that's what you do. Uh, that's what happens when you are yourself. The more you are yourself, the more you're impactful for life, and so it, there is an expansion for everybody. Uh, so, but I don't, I don't, uh, I have an intent, but I don't have expectations. So the intent is to be myself and, and be of service. Uh, and uh, the more I, I uh, am present with that intent, the more it seems like there is an expansion and there is a, a, a response from outside. However, again, I don't have uh, any expectation that anything has to happen. Uh, so every time something happens, it's always a, a beautiful surprise for me.